A few months ago, I reviewed Fighting Vipers on the Sega Saturn. That included the arcade game and the Sega Saturn port, the characters, and how impressive the game was. Now it's time for the follow-up, a 3D fighting game for the Saturn that was never released in arcades, a crossover between several AM2 games, one that actually predates Nintendo's Super Smash Bros. It's Fighters Mega Mix tonight on Gaming Delight. Production note, to control my characters for B-roll footage, I used the Retrobit wireless Sega Saturn controller. Before we get to Fighters Megamix, let's look back at the Sega Saturn starting with its launch. The Sega Saturn, released in November of 1994 in Japan, was ahead of the Sony PlayStation, released a month later. However, Sony was slowly gaining ground as time wore on. Meanwhile, in North America, as the Saturn hit Japan, Sega of America released the 32X, a new add-on for the Sega Genesis that turned it into a 32-bit system. To say the 32X was a massive flop is just an understatement. The small library of games didn't live up to expectations, and gamers knew that the Saturn would be coming soon. And well, they got their wish a mere six months later. It was originally intended for a release on Saturday, September 2nd, 1995, dubbed Saturn Day. But Sega of Japan, wanting to get ahead of the PlayStation everywhere, pushed Sega of America president Tom Kalinske to release the Saturn in North America four months earlier. Kalinske was hesitant, but there was nothing he could do. On May 11, 1995, at the very first Electronics Entertainment Expo, or E3 for short, the Sega Saturn was showcased, and Kalinske announced that the Saturn would retail for $400 and would come packaged with Virtual Fighter, a game that really drove sales for the Saturn in Japan. But then came the announcement that no one was expecting, nor was prepared for. We're taking all the opportunities we can to make this business soar. And since I began my remarks with an announcement, I may as well finish with another. We started our rollout of Sega Saturn yesterday. We were at retail today. With a heavy heart, Kalinske announced that due to high consumer demand, 30,000 Saturn units were already shipped to a limited number of store chains nationwide. Toys R Us, Babbage's, Software Etc., and Electronics Boutique. Our total rollout will take the summer to complete, but we're starting today in store and starting today on primetime TV with these commercials. Sega Saturn is not only here now, it's out there. Thanks. It's been an honor. This announcement totally knocked retailers off guard. Retailers such as Walmart and Best Buy criticized Sega for not keeping them in the loop. One retail chain that really hurt Sega was KB Toys, which refused to take in the Saturn. Furthermore, two months later, the Saturn was released in Europe, also ahead of schedule. Thus, retailers and the press in Europe didn't have enough time to promote the system. As if that weren't bad enough for Sega, on the same day the Saturn's early launch was announced, during Sony's presentation for the PlayStation, Sony Computer Entertainment of America president Steve Race stepped up to the podium and announced, $2.99. That was all gamers needed to hear. The Sony PlayStation would launch four months later, but $100 cheaper than the Saturn. When it launched on September 9, 1995, Sony sold more units on the first weekend alone than the Saturn did in its four-month head start. Furthermore, the PlayStation launched with 10 quality games, including Ridge Racer and Battle Arena Toshinden. The Saturn only had six during its head start, none of which were third party. Among the titles were Virtua Fighter, Daytona USA, and Panzer Dragoon. All three were solid, but not enough to drive up Saturn sales. Did I mention that so many chips and processors rendered the Saturn extremely difficult to program games for? That was a factor in why the launch had no third-party titles. In October of 1995, 
Sega tried to remedy their dilemma by cutting the price of the Saturn by $100 and released heavy hitters like Sega Rally Championship, Virtua Cop, and Virtua Fighter 2. Sales did improve, but not enough to catch up to the PlayStation. Not only that, but because the Saturn was an expensive system to manufacture, slashing the price of the system meant Sega was selling it at a bigger loss than before. And Sega's losses continued to grow the next year when Sega and Sony cut the prices of their systems to $199 apiece. Sega couldn't absorb the losses, even with hits like Nights into Dreams and Fighting Vipers approaching store shelves. Sony, however, being a company of deep pockets, could. To add insult to injury, in 1996, the Nintendo 64 was released, and in North America alone, 500,000 units were sold in only four months, beating out the Saturn's early launch around 6 to 1. All the while, back in Japan, Sega's AM2 division had a goal in mind, to include a roster of 32 characters from their previous titles in a big collaboration for the Saturn. To that end, a crossover video game came into existence. A fighting game that contained characters from two of AM2's best fighting games, Virtua Fighter 2 and Fighting Vipers, and then some. The idea of a crossover video game wasn't actually new. In 1988, Konami released Konami YY World for the Famicom in Japan. It featured playable characters from prior Konami titles, including the Vic Viper from Gradius, Penta from Antarctic Adventure, and Goemon. In 1994, SNK cemented the trend with the King of Fighters on their Neo Geo platforms. This series included characters from various SNK franchises, including Fatal Fury and Art of Fighting. Not only that, but in 1996, Capcom released Street Fighter Alpha 2, which, while not much of a crossover, did feature cameos by characters from other Capcom titles, as well as a playable character from Final Fight, Rolento. On November 8, 1996, Fighters Megamix was first announced at the Sega Saturn Senryaku Hapyokai press conference, along with plans for ports of AM3's Last Bronx and the Model 3 arcade game Virtua Fighter 3. Last Bronx would eventually see a Saturn port worldwide in 1997, but the Saturn port of Virtua Fighter 3 was scrapped, likely due to high cost of an accelerator cartridge and the Dreamcast nearing completion. Fighters Megamix was released for the Sega Saturn on December 21, 1996 in Japan, May 15, 1997 in North America, and May 22, 1997 in PAL regions. <laughs> Graphic-wise, it's no better or worse than any previous AM2 game released on the Saturn. But what makes this game stand out is the massive character roster. It consists of characters from Virtua Fighter 2 and Fighting Vipers, with characters from other AM2 titles as unlockable bonuses. The Virtua Fighter characters actually utilize about 50% of the techniques from Virtua Fighter 3, which hit the arcades about three months before Fighter's Megamix. Among these techniques was dodging, allowing the character to sidestep to dodge a deadly blow and leave the opponent open for a counterattack. The Fighting Vipers characters keep their body armor so as to reduce the damage until their armor is shattered. Virtua Fighter characters have certain new moves capable of breaking the Fighting Vipers armor. Brilliant way to balance gameplay if you don't mind my saying so. The game features five modes, training, two-player versus mode, survival mode, tag team battle mode, and a single player mode with nine different courses, four of which were available out of the box. In each course, you get to take on seven opponents, the last of whom is an unlockable character, for most courses anyway. Course A is the novice trial for beginners. Course B is where you take on the Virtua Fighter characters. Beat this and you unlock Kid Akira and Kid Sarah from Virtua Fighter Kids. Course C, Fighting Vipers characters. 
beating this course will unlock Aura Bond, a super-powered bond. Course D, Girls. Beat this, unlock Janet Marshall from Virtua Cop. By clearing all these courses, you can unlock courses E through G. Course E, Muscle, hits you against strong characters, from Bon all the way to Akira, before taking on unlockable Bark the Polar Bear from Sonic the Fighters. By beating this course, you unlock not only Bark, but Bean the Dynamite, another Sonic the Fighters character. Course F, Smart Guys you battle the tactical fighters, including Akira. The unlockable final boss? The titular protagonist of Rent-A-Hero, a 1991 RPG that was only released in Japan for the Mega Drive. Course G, Dirty Fighters. In this course, you're fighting characters who use cheap tactics in combat, from Sunman to Dural, with Deku as the unlockable final boss. Deku, by the way, is exclusive to Fighters Megamix. He's a green bean who wears a sombrero. Beat these three courses, and you unlock Course H, in which you take on the bosses. Dural, BM, Oraban, Janet, Rentahiro, Kid Akira, and Siba a character who was planned for the original Virtua Fighter, but for whatever reason, was scrapped. He's quite brutal with the swords he wields. He also has a different moveset compared to all the others. Beat this course, and you unlock him and Course I. Course I is the Secrets Course, featuring the remaining bonus characters not fought in Course H. The final unlockable boss is Hornet, car number 41 from Daytona, USA. Yes, you fight a car in a fighting game, and when you beat it, you can fight as the same car. With its armor, it has its own moveset, but when its armor is destroyed, it fights like Bond. Among other unlockables, when you beat Course A, you unlock Honey in her schoolgirl outfit. Once you do that, to access it, select Honey and press X or Z. If you boot the game about 30 times, you unlock another exclusive character, Niku, or Mr. Meat. Once unlocked, place the cursor on Kumachan, then press X when you choose to play Course I. Yes, Niku is a pretty weird character. But then again, what's a Sega game of the 90s without a little humor? If you play this game for at least 84 accumulative hours, the AM2 palm tree will be unlocked. Then you can access it by selecting Kumachan with the Z button. Very odd characters for a fighting game. But then again, Fighting Vipers already had an odd character in the form of Kumachan. He looked more like a Thanksgiving Day Parade balloon to me. Fighters Megamix was well received with critics. Game Informer gave it the highest rating the magazine had ever given a Saturn game, 9.25 out of 10. GamePro rated the graphics 4.5 out of 5, while rating everything else a perfect 5 and stated, This fighter packs a huge punch and should keep even the most jaded fighting fans playing for days. The UK magazine, Digitizer, ranked the game number 3 in its top 3 games of 1997 just behind Super Mario 64 and Final Fantasy VII. In the United States, Blockbuster rated it their hottest Saturn rental for three consecutive months. Of all the unlockable characters, I have to give props to Schoolgirl Honey. Let's face it, Honey carries her popularity from Fighting Vipers over to this game. 
and she only gets more beautiful in Fighter's Mega Mix. There was also a pinup in one of the endings showing Honey without her armor or skirt. That pinup was retained in the Power release, but omitted in the North American release. Now, I've got some gripes with the game. While I was able to get the moves down pat, considering my knowledge of Virtual Fighter and Fighting Vipers, I was still bumped by the fact that even though characters from Sonic the Fighters were included, Sonic the Hedgehog himself was nowhere to be found. Including him, even as an unlockable, would surely have driven up sales of the game and the Saturn all over. Definitely would have made up for not having a mainstream Sonic game on the Saturn, which was a major factor in the system's failures in the West. Did I mention that some of the oddball characters look like balloons when they fight? Pretty awkward. Despite these gripes, Fighters Megamix is truly an amazing 3D crossover fighting game that could only ever be outmatched by Super Smash Bros. This game would have made a killing on the Saturn in the West, like it did in Japan. Unfortunately, by the time it hit North America in 1997, the damage had already been done. The market for the Saturn in the West still hadn't bounced back from the disastrous early launch in North America, and the system was still struggling against the Sony PlayStation, especially with Square's smash hit Final Fantasy VII already out in Japan and gearing up for a Western release. Furthermore, the Nintendo 64 was less than a year out, further cutting into the Saturn sales. Plus, new management at Sega of America began diminishing what little support the Saturn had left, knowing that hemorrhaging more money would only endanger their chances of staying in the hardware business even further. Although Fighters Megamix was never released in arcades, it wasn't actually exclusive to the Saturn. In 1998, the game was ported to the Tiger Electronics handheld GameCom. But this laughable port is just not worth sullying this video over. No, 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 no. After the GameCom release, Fighters Megamix never got re-released in any official capacity. Still, this game is absolutely astonishing. Glamorous graphics, superb soundtrack, and considerate controls. It's a shame that Sega never made a follow-up to this. Not on the Saturn, not on the Dreamcast, not ever. If you have a Sega Saturn and want to play this game for yourself, even finding a complete North American copy isn't too expensive. But to save money and experience what was left out of the Western releases, the Japanese version is highly recommended. The GameCom version actually goes for around $20 in today's market for those actually interested. But the Sega Saturn version is definitely worth picking up, considering fighting games are pretty much the go-to genre among the Saturn's library. Thanks again for watching Game in the Light. Until next time, happy gaming!